Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. Now in this video, we're not actually going to do any flying. What I want to do in this video is walk through a technical explanation for how we can get a really good approximation for when to begin the, the breaking burn for the direct landing script that Dimitri put together. So before I go any further, I do want to mention that this should be considered a spoiler. So if you haven't flown this flight yet and you plan to do so, then I would suggest that you don't watch this video, uh, at least not until after you've already tried it a few times on your own. And if you have flown the flight and you haven't worked it out yet, then I would also suggest maybe um, coming back to the video at a later date after you've had a success on your own. I think you'll, I think you'll appreciate your success a lot more if you spend the blood, sweat, and tears, so to speak, of uh, grinding out the mission on your own so that you can you know figure it out and when you get that first landing and everything works out it's just it's a really good feeling so I don't want to take that away from anybody so like I said consider this video a spoiler uh, the other thing I want to mention is that the method that we're going to walk through in this video isn't something that I came up with on my own by any means uh, Dimitri showed this to me and gave me a diagram to explain how it worked um, but having said that, it doesn't require like any really complex math. So anybody that has even basic math skills should be able to follow along with this pretty easily. So with all that said, let me go ahead and switch camera views here and jump into it. All right, so uh, this is just like a cover image that I put up here for the direct landing for the direct landing script. And so yeah, we're just gonna go through a bit of a, of a math explanation here and even if math isn't really your thing, then um, you know don't worry. I think you can follow along with this pretty easily. All you need is a calculator, uh, pencil, and paper to go through it maybe the first time. And then once you've gone through it the first time, you know you can, uh, if you have even just this much knowledge of spreadsheets, you can put a spreadsheet together to plug in the numbers and just calculate everything like that. All right, so let's talk about this. So what we're looking at here is a. Uh, you know, imagine this is the moon, and in, in the dead center of the moon we have this crosshair. So one of the first things I want to know is, well, what is the distance between the center of the moon and the surface of the moon? Well, we can get that information by going to our orbiter directory, going into the config directory, and then inside of there there's a file called moon.cfg. On line 8 of that file, there's a line that says size equals... Uh, 1.738e6 and that is the mean radius and this is going to be the most accurate way to find the radius on the moon there's probably other methods you could use like you know putting the delta glider on the surface of the moon somewhere and then bringing up orbit but this this is how it's defined in the software so this is going to give us our most accurate information so this translates to 1,738,000 and then three zeros so that's how we get our radius so again, that is, uh, so now we know the radius. And the radius, of course, uh, this is the mean radius to the surface. So what that means is that uh, there are going to be some parts of the moon in Orbiter 2016 that are actually a little bit higher, or where the number would be a bit bigger than this. And there are going to be other parts of the moon where the number would be a bit lower than this. But this is the mean radius, which is the same all the way around the moon. But again, there are peaks and valleys where you would have to uh, consider uh, a slight difference in that number, and we'll get more into that in a minute. So then, I, then we can imagine, you know, we have our delta glider represented by this little rocket ship clip art that's coming into the moon and needing to do a direct landing. And the delta glider is some distance away from the center of the moon. Now, do keep in mind that the lines that we're seeing here are in some cases exaggerated for the sake of clarity um, and obviously the rocket ship here is greatly exaggerated this would be nothing more than a uh, less than a one pixel if you know if this was to scale you wouldn't even be able to see the rocket ship obviously it would be so tiny that it wouldn't even show up so just keep in mind you know these distances are exaggerated just so that we can see things better so if we again if we imagine you know that our rocket ship is some distance from the center of the moon and we imagine that our rocket ship is some distance from the base where we're trying to target then you can see that we have created a triangle 
and triangles are really useful in math and I'm sure you've seen various science videos on YouTube that you know talk about the usefulness of triangulation and these types of things so if we can work out the distance from the rocket ship to the base and the rocket ship to the center of the moon then we have created a triangle that we can use to determine at what altitude above the moon we should begin our breaking burn now to work out the first part here or well not the first part but to work out this part uh, this side of the triangle we can do that by using interplanetary MFD and burn time calculator so at, if you've seen my attempts at the direct landing you'll notice that one of the first things I do is bring up interplanetary MFD and I put in Brighton Beach as my target and then once I have Brighton Beach set as my target I then set the altitude for Brighton Beach which the dead center of Brighton Beach is negative 2566 meters which is why I have that number there I suppose the various landing pads might be at a slightly different altitude by one or two meters one way or the other but for the most part you know this altitude is what we're going to be plugging in all the time negative 2566 so keep that in mind and then we put in some anticipation angle and I'm still working on that um, I think this number has been working pretty well but maybe you know it could be negative 0 0.25 or negative 0 0.2 or maybe sometimes negative 0 0.35 but more or less this is the setup once we have uh, Brighton Beach targeted and we've set the altitude and we've set our anticipation angle interplanetary MFD gives us something that's really useful it gives us this uh, re-entry velocity the re-entry velocity is a number that represents how fast we would slam into the ground if we didn't do anything so once I have set up interplanetary MFD you know and I've done my burn to get my my base aligned and everything if I then take my hands off and do nothing else based on this particular flight when I was setting up these slides I would hit the ground at 4180 meters a second if I did nothing well if I take that number and plug it into burn time calculator you know by pressing the DB button burn time calculator gives me this distance which is 339,179 meters and that is what this red line represents this red line represents 339,179 meters or 339.179 kilometers so we have now solved two parts of our triangle we now have uh, this side and we have this side so all we have left to do is to figure out what the length of this side is and then we can do a simple calculation to find out at what altitude uh, we can begin our breaking burn and if this were a right triangle it'd be much easier we would just plug in you know Sokotoa or Pythagorean theorem and be off by the races but this is not a right triangle if we draw a line tangent to the the base uh, you know perpendicular to the line coming up from the center of the moon you'll notice that we have created a right triangle on this part so we know that we know that this part is obviously 90 degrees it's a right angle so then the question is what is this angle you know if because if we can't figure out what this angle is then we can't solve for this side of the triangle well fortunately IMFD gives us that angle so just as before you know we have our we have Brighton Beach targeted we plugged in our information we use the relative uh, or we use the re-entry velocity to get uh, that part um, to get this line calculated and now we have the we, we now know what this angle is it's 20 in this particular flight and this is in a change on every flight but in this particular flight it was 28.954 degrees so I now know what this entire angle is because all I have to do is take 28.954 add 90 degrees to it and I now have solved for this angle which means I now have a side an angle and a side an SAS and you might remember from uh, geometry or trigonometry you know what we can do with that 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to label each one of these. Uh, I'm going to label each one of these angles. I'm going to label uh, the 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 first angle down here at the at the moon's center. I'm going to call it angle A. The angle that the base is making, I'm going to I'm going to call it angle B. And the angle between uh, this side and this side where our rocket ship is at, I'm going to I'm going to label that as angle C. So then, if this is angle A, that means that this will be side A, you know, straight across. And if this is angle B, then going straight across makes this side B. And if this is angle C, then going straight across makes this side C. So now we have everything labeled. Uh, if you do a search for the law of cosines, you can find out all kinds of information about it online. But I got this one from mathguide.com. And it explains, you know, that there's a couple of uh, cases where using the law of cosines comes in handy. And one of those cases is exactly what we have right here, when the two sides and the angle between them are known. And that's exactly what we have here. We have two known sides and we have an angle between them. So we're going to, we're going to use the law of cosines to calculate what the length of side B is. So I'm taking this equation, b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2 times ac times cosine b, and then we're taking the square uh, of both sides, the square root of both sides, to isolate the b, the b variable, um, you know, the, the side b by itself. Now technically when you do this, you're going to have a plus and a minus, but in our case, we're talking about distances and lengths here, so negative would be erroneous. So we're not going to worry about the plus and minus. We're just going to keep the positive answer. And again, we know the length of side A. That was what we calculated from plugging in the reentry velocity into burn time calculator. And then we got this number, the 339,179 meters. Let me show you that again, just as a refresher. So we got that way back here by plugging the reentry uh, velocity into burn time calculator. And that's how we got that number. And we know that uh, we know side C is the radius of the moon, but one thing we have to keep in one thing we have to take into account is that Brighton Beach is in a valley, so it's technically below the mean radius. So the distance between the center of the moon and our base is the radius of the moon minus 2,566 meters, and this is important. If we leave this out, you know we're it, it, it ma just let me just say it matters and this is also important because if you were trying to do this at a different landing site like if you had a different if you had a different base on the moon or if you were trying to land at some arbitrary spot maybe on top of a mountain you do have to take into account what that difference is especially if you're trying to land like on top of a mountain that's like 11 kilometers so our side C is the radius of the moon minus the landing site because it's a valley in this case, or if it was on a mountain, it would be plus the altitude of the landing site. But in this case, we take the radius minus 2,566, which gives us uh, 1,735,434 meters is, is the length of side C. And as we discussed before, angle B is just 90 degrees plus the re-entry angle that we got from burn time calculator, which is 28.954. And again, all this is specific to this particular flight that I was doing when I set up these slides. So that gives us 118.954 degrees. Now we have everything we need to solve our equation because we just plug our A variable in here. We plug our C variable in here and we plug our A here, our C here, and then our cosine B angle uh, here. And here's how the math looks. Um, again, this isn't, you know, I think the thing that makes it maybe intimidating is just the length of the numbers. But, you know, if we think of this as like a small number, two and five and nine, you can see it's not complicated. It's just the numbers are big. But again, we plug our, we, so I've kind of broken this down into steps. This is A squared, which gives us this larger number. This is c squared, which gives us this larger number. Then 2 times ac gives us this number here. 
and then the cosine of 118.954 degrees, and degrees are important. If your calculator is in radians, you'll get an erroneous answer. But when we take the cosine of that angle, we get this number. And then when we uh, put all this together, we get this number here. And then when we take the, uh, the square root of this number, we get uh, what is this? 1,922,676.96 meters. And again, technically this is plus or minus, but we only want the positive number. And now we can calculate the burn altitude. So this gives us the, if we go way back to, uh, let's just say this slide. Remember, we already know that the distance from here to the surface is 1,738,000 meters. So really what we're trying to solve is like the distance from here to the surface. So when we subtract out the radius of the moon, we're left with the burn altitude of 184,677 meters or about uh, or 184.677 kilometers. Now, this is mathematically uh, you know, this is when you would begin the burn, like under most ideal circumstances. <clears throat> but there's a couple things to point out here that are very important to remember. Um, so the first thing to know is that your human ability to react is not instantaneous. You know, you can't just see that number show up on the screen and immediately, within one nanosecond, press the burn button. You can't do it. It's impossible. And even if you could do that, you so let's so taking that into consideration, since you can't do that, that means if you begin the burn at this time, you're gonna <laughs> slam into the moon because your reaction time is too slow. Even if you have perfect reaction time, you would still slam into the moon if you use this number because it just takes time for the engines to ramp up. The third reason you would still slam into the moon if you use this exact number is because you know, the reality of physics, we, you know, here we're showing this nice, perfect triangle with, you know, straight lines, and that's not reality. The way the, the, way the delta glider is actually gonna, going to come down to the, the base is under, it's, it's going to come in under a curved path. You know, here we're showing perfectly straight lines, and that's just not how it actually works. The delta glider is actually going to follow, you know, more of a, a, a curved path. And this calculation doesn't take that into account. So for those three reasons, you know, lack of reaction time, uh, engine time to ramp up, and the fact that this equation is not perfect means that we need to add a margin of error to this number in order to make sure we don't slam into the moon. And that margin of error is probably going to differ from one person to the next, depending on your reaction time. But what I would, me looking at this number, you know, at the very least, I'm going to round this up to 185 kilometers. And then for me, I'm probably going to add on top of that another um, 185. I'd probably add, I'd probably start the burn if it were me around 100. Like when I saw it go from 190 and I saw it click over to 189, that's probably when I would begin the burn. I'm a bit more conservative though. Um, but that's just something you're going to have to do experimentally and find out what works for you. You know, if you're, if you try the burn at 186 kilometers and you find yourself slamming into the moon, you know, try another flight and bearing in mind, you're going to have to try all new numbers because every flight's going to be different. But if you added 1.5 kilometers the first time it didn't work, maybe add two. And if you're still, you know, cutting it too close, then add two and a half, then three and so on until you find that sweet spot. So once you, once you have done all of this, I think you'll find that you will be able to reliably repeat this flight and land at Brighton Beach on the landing pad within the time that's allotted and within the DV budget that's allotted most of the time. You may, you may still have problems nailing the landing, but if, you, if you've been doing this manually where you're just, you know, you're not using any equations and you're just trying to do it all you know, by line of sight and everything, and you're failing to do that eight out of 10 times or nine out of 10 times, then 
when you use this method, I think that you'll get, I think you'll get it right. When you get really good at it, you'll, you'll probably get it right 10 out of 10 times. But at the very least, I would say nine out of 10 flights, you will be able to nail the landing. All right, so that is a complete explanation of of this flight, and I don't think I left out anything that I was hoping to include in this explanation. So if you enjoyed watching this video, hit the like button down below, give this a try, and in the next video I record, I'm going to employ this exact calculation that I just showed, which will be my 12th attempt at the direct landing. You saw we had a success on six, seven, and eight, but then attempts 9, 10, and 11 were failures. So let's try at least three more flights, maybe even five or six more using this method. And let's see how much, let's see how, let's see how many times we can repeat, repeat the flight and nail the landing. So with all that said, I hope you appreciate, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.